but your last game was 1984 Grand Final. 84 Grand Final. Yeah. Now, you did play 221 first grade games. You achieved origin representation. You played 11 career Grand Finals and entered the history books of being the first player to captain two different clubs to premiership success. Was that the right time for you to move into your post-football career? Yeah, well, you left out great clubs, two great clubs. <laughs> uh, Must be on the other club. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, it was right, although I think at the end of 84 on the trip away up to the Gold Coast, I think I came out of retirement and said, I think I'll play in 1985. It was about 12 o'clock at night yes, most at Melbourne's... Melbourne, most of them came out of retirement. Melbourne's place. disco, so I came out of retirement and then at the Miami Hotel where we were staying the next morning, I reneged on the... Uh, <laughs> on the arrangement. Now, I'd, I'd had enough. I, I, I thought to myself, look, you, 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 you've been very lucky in your career. Um, you know, got beaten in the last grand final, but that, how on earth are you going to worry about that? But we, we, we'd got there. Um, I knew it was time to go. The bride, she was hoping it was the time to go. And uh, yeah, no, no, I made the right decision then. Uh, you know, because I remember going through the... Uh, a, a tough decision as to whether play whether to play again, um, because uh, you know I was out like with the with the eye injury. I was out for half a season, and um, it was mis you know I, I thought I was never going to be able to play again. And, and uh, but my specialist, uh, Dr. John Harding, he uh, he said, uh, I said, uh, mate, what are my chances? He said, uh, go and play. I said, yeah, but what if it comes off again? He said, let me worry about that, not you. And that was wonderful because I, I, I was just just over the moon to be able to uh, to uh, to continue uh, the rest of the season. Uh, oddly enough, I got to play with my younger brother in in the third grade uh, when I was coming back. I played third, one game third grade, one reserve grade, and then back into first grade. So that was pretty wonderful too. Mickey went on a couple of years longer. Also suffered an eye injury yourself. Um, but you, on the flip side, your final game was a grand final victory. Uh, is there any better way to go out of play? Look, as a grand final, look, I don't look back on that ga game as, that, that, that could go down as one of my worst games of football, in which there were plenty of bad ones, but very fortunate to go out on a winning note. Look, I hurt my eye in the first trial game. I lost the sight of my eye, right? So my doctor thought I was mad if I come back, and I wasn't actually coming back, and I thought, oh, look, I've come this far. If I can finish, like I never come back, I think my first game back was in July. And I thought, well, I'll finish off if I can. I sort of went up, the, started going up the Oval at home, trying to train, you know, because you, with, when I lost the side, you lose um, depth perception, you know, and that was the thing that bugged me the most about playing. So, um, but I, look, I come back, and then not long after I come back, I broke a rib, so then I was out for a few more weeks. So I only play, come back and played six or seven games, but to go out on winning a grand final was very lucky. Very, look, very, was very good, but from my point of view, you know, very, I was very lucky to be playing. Not so much to be lucky to be winning, but I was very lucky to be playing. The fact that the coach gave me some support, Raymond Price, he kept on me about, you know, you can see out the year, and um, a few others in the club. So, yeah, but as I said, I see that as, first of all, getting back, being lucky to get back and play, and very lucky to win a grand final. Look, very, very lucky to be playing in a winning grand final, put it that way. Yeah. I think you sort of get a gut feeling on it, you know, like, I'm thinking to myself, we, I've beaten the grand final, but no, no, that's pretty, don't, don't push your luck. Actually, on the trip away at the end of the year at 12 o'clock, I said, look, I'm not coming back to play, but I will come back for next year's trip away. <laughs> <laughs> was, we had some good ones. I was never going back to play, I can assure yeah. you. Because yeah. actually, losing the side of my might have did me a favour in one way, because if I hadn't, I would have went back and played in Group 7 down home for a year or two, and that might have been the smartest thing to do. So, as it turned out, losing the sort of eye, there might have been one, there might have been one uh, silver lining there. <laughs> a snippet of your achievements, 216 career games, Michael, country New South Wales and Australian rep, uh, leading point scorer for five seasons and a record at 1971 career points, dual Rothmans medalist, ARL Hall of Fame, Order of Australia, uh, and then a, a distinguished career of 30 years as administrator. So, what, after all of that? Administrator. <laughs> That's all your coaching and all that time. Oh, coaching, yeah. I'm going to say. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, look, 
outstanding. But look, it's obvious I love the game, right? Maybe it's obvious I love the game. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, good. Look, I enjoy, look, I saw, I saw Cage in the air, but I mean, I cage my two sons. I cage down in Durangong where, despite what people think, no one gets paid, but, and I enjoy it, yeah. And as I said, we win a comp down there. I, people say about, you know, oh, it's not like when you're playing, but when you're, you're involved with a lot of other people and you see the enjoyment they all get, no matter where it is. It's, there's not a lot of difference, but as a, I think they're the most the ones you enjoy the most when the ones you're playing. But as I said, I still, I still love the game, obviously. Same with Edgy, when he's still working in the game. So. Most people today would know you as uh, behind the bar at Cronin's Pub. What's it like being a, uh, owning a, a pub down in Jerringham? Well, most people knew me before I came to Sydney to play football. Was working here. See, I've been working. I left school and went. Better than the best. I left school and went into the pub, right? Because as I said, it's a family hotel. The father was a builder by trade, and when I left school and went into the pub, he went back building with my younger brother. So, it was a lifestyle. And, so, and as I said, I never, I had never had any intentions of leaving Jerringham. But the last year I played in Jerringham, I played very poorly, and I just wonder whether there's something in the back of my head saying, "Look, go up there for a year or two." Prove a point to yourself and nothing else and then. But I come up there for one or two, um, enjoyed it. There was a bit of a challenge there. And, and as I said, I was keen about winning a comp. So you used to turn up every year hoping you were going to win one in the end. We had a bit of luck, a bit of joy. Mm. Uh, you spent uh, some time, as you discussed, coaching Parramatta. Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts on the club these days? Where do you think it's headed? How do you compare your career? And I ask you as well, Steve, how do you compare what you played with uh, to what you see in the game today? Look, my coaching, when the coaching job came up, my father said to me, and he wasn't, a, he wasn't the dumbest man in the world, my father, he said, it's a bad time to be going to coach Parramatta. I said, look, I realise that. I said, but look, I'm not going to be a full-time rugby league coach. I said, in three or four years' time, the opportunity might be there. I said, I enjoyed it there. I said, if I go, don't go now, the opportunity might never rise again. But I, and I knew what he was saying. And I knew, I knew the problems that were there. But look, thankful for the opportunity. I enjoyed it there. And as I said, look, I got nothing to thanks for what Parramatta did for me over the years. And, actually, and the coach, I enjoyed the coaching. But as I said, we struggled. And the first year I coached, the salary cap come in. It wasn't a matter of going out and buying players. It was a matter of saying, listen, you've got to get rid of a few. You've got to get rid of a few. And they probably hadn't recovered from some ways from, see, when we won in 86, there was a lot of young blokes signed on probably contracts that, because there was no salary cap, but then in, when the salary cap came in, they had probably had some people on more money than probably they wouldn't be under the circumstances, because you've got to realise the salary cap went over 55 players. So then that 86 side, that run had ended with a lot of injuries to their key players and that retirements and different things, and you know, blokes started to get injured and then some of the young players who they invested in, because they'd had such a great run with all the young juniors, I think that's what everyone who was coming through was another Sterling, another Kenny, another, but they didn't all come up to that standard. And then because, once you sort of start to fall back under the salary cap at that time, it's hard to attract players. You know, you, especially when the clubs, some clubs are strong, so you stay with the clubs you're at, like Canberra are strong and those, Brisbane, those sort of places. So it was hard to attract players, but look, I'm forever thankful for the, and I enjoyed it. Yeah. Playing-wise, how do you compare your playing careers to what you see uh, today on the field? Oh, mate, there's no doubt they're bigger, they're stronger, they're uh, more skillful and the like because that's their job. It's a full-time occupation. Nowadays, we, uh, you know, you, you, you did your, your normal job and then and then you did um, uh, training as as. as as, as your hobby, the, the fact that the, your hobby was more important to you than what your work was uh, was, was irrelevant. But um, oh no, no, they, they, are, they are outstanding athletes and, and so much quicker, and, and yeah, just the things they can do, unbelievable. But having said that, uh, you know, your, your Cronins, your Kellys, and uh, Kenny's rather, and Sterling's, and all that, those guys would all be equally as good now as what they were then. Um, just the training has just gone so much further uh, to what it is. They're, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're full-time athletes. They're, they're just, you know, that's their job. They're you know, you know, unbelievably skillful. You wonder how Jack would go today because Jack's saying was, 
we can see too much of each other. <laughs> he said, we won't, be we won't be having any extra training runs, we can see too much of each other. And the day where they I think sometimes they might see too much of each other today, actually, some of them. But that's the thing about, like, realistically, you know, what, the only thing, I don't begrudge the footballs today one thing, but it does make me laugh sometimes when they're saying we're playing too much football. I think if you asked any old footballer, no matter, you said, listen, we're going to give you between 500,000 to a million to play 30 games of football a year, you'd say, oh, I could put up with that. <laughs> okay. And I really, think the, I really think the people today, like, this is, it makes me, this, and I don't, it makes me laugh today, they talk about they're playing too much football, right, they're playing. There's never been a time in the game when there's been so many 300 game footballs as today. You can't find a 300 game footballer going back probably 20 years, can you? Who's mm. the first? Who's the first place ever? So from that point of view, they're all they're all lasting longer in the game, and so they should for the fact that they probably don't play as as many in some ways year, each year. Um, well, if they did, they'd only be the same. Better treatment, better training. You know, if you get injured, you haven't got to worry about trying to get the, that's the first thing they say, right, you can't train for a week or you can't train, go and do this, we'll get this for you. And that's where they, you know, everything's, everything about the game is more professional, so they're better treated. And that's the only thing I sometimes laugh at when they say, oh, they're getting a million dollars a year, which you know some of them are getting, and they're saying we're playing, but they, they, don't, they don't stop playing. <laughs> and the thing about it, the money, the money that the game produced is only produced because they're playing that many games a year. If they start playing less games, there'll be less money because, as we all know, most of their money comes through TV and different things. But they earn every zack of it, mate, so, you know, I, I don't begrudge them in any way, shape or form because, uh, you know, uh, I, I was lucky in, in, when I came through, uh, through our era, uh, and it's just a different era now. Um, and I think at the end of the day, they'll, they'll still have all of their mates later on as they when they retire and go on because that's what rugby league's been all about. Like we all we all still see each other and um, you know it's oh, just, it's just, it's just yeah. rugby league's just such a, a wonderful game to, to have been involved with. And I, I just realise how lucky you know I have been. Well that's what I'm saying. I, I don't begrudge them anything, although they said that, that you know but I just think some of them and the thing about it, I don't think some of them got a history idea of the history of the game. I think they think it's always been that way. That's what I'm saying. Some of them don't realise how fortunate they are in some ways, you know, that they come into this situation where they're, you know, if you're good enough, there's 10 or 12 years where you're going to earn something that they would never earn in any other, that they wouldn't earn, a lot of them in some other sort of work, work you know. <laughs> and their 12 year career might be two years. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's that's always, that's always, or, yeah. mm. or something like that. Mm. It, I, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful game, but it, it's just, uh, it's so quick. And they're so powerful, uh, you know. I often say, look, if you get a chance, you, you go and sit down on the on the fence, and and you watch the game from there, because then you'll realise why guys knock balls on and and miss tackles and stuff like that, because it's going so quick, and and when they hit, oh mate, they do hit, you know, and and, and you know, very very much legally, mm. they hit now, you know, they, and they still do some. Damage. We've uh, woken up, and I hope this is uh, not a difficult question for you, Steve, to answer. We're talking about the 2016 Eagles lineup. We've got Kieran Horan, we've got Michael Jennings, this news we've just woken up to this morning. Bo Scott's a new addition as well, uh, Clint Gutherson. Uh, the side's looking pretty good by all sort of standards. How do you think the Eels might go in 2016? Well, they're in a rebuilding phase. Um, I think Sharpie's doing a wonderful job out there with, with, with his club. Um, injuries is what's going to be an issue uh, for, for any club. Um, but I'd, I'd love to see St George Parramatta grand final because if that happens, <laughs> they'd sell out within about three minutes because uh, it'd be just wonderful. Yeah, look, it's an interesting stage. Talent-wise, the talent looks all right there, you know, and you got, as you said, you got the 5'8", who always looks like a competitor, looks like a week in, week out, and you just sort of hope he's, you know, he's had a history of a bit of a hamstring problem, but, yeah, it's a, it's a time of year where we all get excited, but I, I, I'm probably a bit, 
I just want to wait and see, but hopefully I'm, I'm like Edge, it'd be great to see them back up there and as you said, but the, ne the thing about it, the longer they go without winning the grand final, the next one they win is going to be a bit like when they won the first, <laughs> because that, you know, you're going back, you know, well 30 years now, isn't it, 30 the years? The witches back, yeah. Yeah, 30 years, so, gee, time flies, isn't it? <laughs> but, it I'll be forty. Look, it's a great, for me, it's, as I said, people say, I, you, you still support Paramount, I said, yeah, I said, they're great for me, they never did anything make me want to hate them, on, you know, and you still hope that they, there's a victory out there. But as I said, as we all realise, they're not easy, you know. You, they have, they've had a few chances since, you know, in the late 90s, you know, 2009, 2001, but on a given day, it gets down to, who, you know, one side being a bit better than the others, or even some days where there's nothing in it at all. They're not easy to win, but hopefully, hopefully they'll get back there, because as I said, it's a great supporters, and that's what, and the league knows that. The league knows it. Gentlemen, it has been an absolute pleasure chatting to both of you. Steve and uh, Nick, thank you very much for chatting with the Cumberland Pro. No trouble, thank no you. No worries, good on you.